Greetings and gratitude, beloveds of Mother Earth. I thank you for now being here in the presence as we invoke favor and grace on everyone. We come forth as a family, and it is a family affair. Soul families here, we are bringing this meeting to order for divine healing everywhere. You are loved and you are supported here on the earth plane as well as in the cosmos. Your soul family wants you to know how much you are loved and how well we are doing. Our soul family consists of other souls that have similar values and ideas to us. The bright circle of the light at the center of this image is Shambhala. Think of it as a meeting place where your soul family gathers to connect with us, with you, with me. When you ask a question, its energy vibrates throughout the universe, bringing souls and their light beings to Shambhala to share responses and information. We are overjoyed to connect and to co-create now in this time. Your questions, your experiences on earth moves you to the central point of expanded awareness of love, life, and purpose. If we go back far enough in time, there was a point when all was connected and all was one. As the instrument of time regressed and progressed, energies released, the source was separated. We all originated from the source. So whatever form the members of our family will take, will appear, recognition will become clear. Because our signature, our soul song, our vibrations, we recognize using our heart as an instrument. And in this place of zero point, of quantum superposition and singularity, we are one. We invoke favor on all at this time to reunite in the central mind, central heart, to connect with soul family. We hear are at a point where we need to adjudicate an understanding, a greater reflection of sacred and divine wholeness and sacred and divine mm -hmm. truths. As we merge here in the center, may it become crystallized and clear so that all may see as we enter. And so it is. We invoke air and fire for the expansion of our creative energies, harnessing our creativity, excitement, and enthusiasm so that we can communicate compassionately now in this now. This card indicates that it's time to harness our gifts, our talents for the highest good and that of the world. We have something in our soul to bring forward. It is now guided. The decision has been made. Circumstances will present themselves as triggers, but in the circle of love, light, and truth, our guides, our presence, our multidimensionality will bring forth the answers and solutions. And as it is catalyzed here in this circle, may it be catalyzed and invoked everywhere. And so it is. Our dilemma comes from a place, and as the seven swords of the seven principal archangels are now present to form one circle, one meeting point, this greed, this creed, and this resolution, I want what others have. Desire, greed, and its highest form, aspiration. The Seven of Swords indicates the desire for what others have, being dishonest, being deceptive, challenging cultural values and ideals. Here we now expose dishonesty, regardless of the risk, overcoming oppression, violence, and iniquity 
and ingenuity is the way that we now deploy to take back that which is rightfully ours, destroying and rebuilding using our stealth to take back what is rightfully ours. Truth is freedom. Love, light, and truth is justice. We invoke justice and favor in this now upon all planes, galactic, intergalactic, universal, earth-based, and in our personal lives as we have come to the realization of covetousness, desiring what others have without fear, compensation, fear, energy exchange, the law of reciprocity, the law of compensation, the law of correspondence, as it is here on earth, so mote it be in the heavens, as it is in the heavens, so must it be here on earth. We invoke favor on this adjudication. The Ace of Swords, I live through my highest values for the highest good. This is the Sword of Truth, Excalibur, the Sword of Archangel Michael. Opportunities to hone our highest intellect, learning new ways to reach our true potential, embodying a powerful philosophy, holding on to the past, does not serve anyone's highest good. Yet we must learn from the past because it is in our shadow, in our darkness, where our deepest truths will hide. Our inner child, our sacred treasures, our creativity, now we must find. It must be transmuted. It must be alchemized before we can move forward. Lack of confidence only leads to hesitation. Yet in this now, we raise our vibration and invoke this flaming sword to cut through all clutters, all misideations, all disappointment, all disillusionment, so that we can raise up in truth and understanding, in inner standing, in overstanding, and become one. Mother Earth, you are the cradle of life, seed bearer of the material plane, queen of the heaven, cosmic I am, cosmic monadic consciousness we are. The Empress, card number three, I fully embrace life's rich fecundity. The Empress reminds us that everything is possible. Allow abundance into our lives tap into the creative flow of the universe, start something, create something nurturing, sacred space for sacred souls. Feeling constricted and stifled, scared, or embracing scarcity consciousness is simply the victim's mindset, poor resource management, discontent with the surroundings. But from this discontent, it creates a desire in that, that higher, energy of desire, we use that which was the refuse to become fertilizers for new thoughts, seeds for new growth, expansion, the flower, the seed growing from within, from the earth, now to form a sacred tree, a sacred life force, a sacred energy that connects from the earth plane directly into the sky, the air elemental, the solar elemental, and beyond that, so we can now embody fully the concepts, the creations that we must harness together to overcome the pain of loss of sadness. What is born eventually die, and thus we must enjoy, relax, and be open to each day we have, understanding the cycles of birth, death, and rebirth. This is the embodiment of the summer, ripe, bursting with vitality, creativity, and abundance and prosperity. We hold these truths dear within our hearts, and we consecrate this flower of life to grow deeply within us and expansion through the darkest night into the bright lighting of the new day. And so it is, and it is so. Thank you, the Empress of the Stars.
Lady Isis reminds us that truths are unveiling, greater truths, deeper truths, anchored within the genetic strains, the patterns of our lives. All is not what it seems to be. There are times when appearances of people, places, and things are truly deceptive. You will sense this when something feels uncomfortable within you. When you notice feelings of anxiety or doubt within you, you may think there is something wrong with you, but actually you are intuitively sensing that all is not as it appears to be. It is wise to trust your inner feeling rather than be convinced by outward appearances. There is a situation in our life, in our planet, in our universe, in the cosmos, especially involving relationships where something is not as it is, being made out to be. To avoid undue sufferings later on, we are guided now to the truth, revealing those truths, bringing up those triggers of places within us that we need to find, we need to nurture, we need to break the strongholds, those patterns, and release the inner saboteur. The invocation at this now is, gift me with your vision now, end the distortions or the vow that blocks the eye within my brow. I receive the knowing clear, without doubt, shame or fear, lies and deceptions disappear. Revelation is come to me swift. Thank you for the sight, the truth, the gift. Confusion into clarity, I now do shift. Thank you for the clearing of this energies so we may fly. The wings of Isis take us to that sweet place of the sweet by and by. Our current affairs we see, the lands burn, the rivers swamp, the rivers flood, air, water, fire, earth making corrective changes here on earth. This indicates where we are in many planes, the possibility of feeling or being abandoned, lack of resources, loss of objects or people, the absence of guidelines may bring about moments of desperation, confusion, or futile efforts, asking for relief, asking for help. My help cometh from that which has created the entirety of the cosmos, the universal awareness. We often say, what does it profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world, the successes, standing on lofty ideals, yet have lost connection with their soul, their intuition, and their higher gifts? Here we see the goat on top of a mountain with four gold coins beneath its feet, four directions, Four is the most, most earthly of all numbers. We should remember the symbol of earth is a circle with a cross at the center. Four directions, four cardinal positions. Three, six, nine, and zero. Coming back into full circle. This card is showing us that by perseverance, we attain success the success we had planned in our long-term vision, gaining very important ground through which we can control, manage, and bring order. Success can bring loneliness, lonesomeness. You will sleep alone. However, to reach the success, perhaps you will be there in bed, embedded in your cocoon. Prophets, the goat always reaches the top of the mountain, but the mountain here is the pinnacle for our crown, building the foundation for the divine wisdom to come forth and anchoring it here down on earth, Gaia, our mothership. Two, do, dua, the two of earth. We see the manatee, we see humanity, in a two-gender struggle for dominance. This dichotomy is part of creation, dual node. You must have receptive force 
you must have active force, projection and reception. This card indicates the possibility of alternating between two places at the same time while maintaining a perfect and just balance. The paternal energy may be strict, easy to anger, but later transforming itself into something tender and kind. The maternal energy, the nurturer, the one that looks back with melancholy, yet in this situation, you must seek balance within the left and right hemispheres of your sacred mind to anchor divine wisdom both from the mother, mother maternal, matter, material, pattern, substance, genome, and the father, pattern, insight, instruction, power, fiery energy, rapid burn, cooling cycles, so that you can bring your thermostat into divine alignment. The three of earth, sorry, the three of water, Three fish making up the sides of a triangle. The summation of the cards, one, two, of water, resulting in the thing that which Christians represent as the trinity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. However, in this homogenized dichotomy, we see only the masculine principle, but the perfection of the triangle without the substantiation of the mother the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah glory, the place, the cradle for which creation must be nestled in the earth in order to bring forth fruit, the fruition of the divine plan. A perfect triangle is the symbol of our faith with underlying power, brings forth a teaching that is in the experience of the above into the below. This card symbolizes victory, good fortune, possibilities favoring triumph, success, and prosperity. Things end as they started. The effect comes from a positive cause that will bring us pleasure and emotional stability. With the lack of faith and understanding, the lack of charity, false promises, false prophets, the vanishing success, the extreme sensuality, the desire for material domination and slavery, through gluttony, alcohol, and sex. Now with the triangulation, the law of the triangle, the law of the circle, we must come back to a sacred truth, a sacred momentum, a sacred mother, mom, enter, netter, and our atoms. This atomic key is the structure of all of our divine truths. We must come into alignment. This card, Yamaya, symbolizes the sweet water of the river making our pilgrimage from the land, from the mountains, from the valleys, through the plains to arrive in the deep waters of the sea. The contrast of salt and sweet. This card symbolizes a respectable woman an affectionate mother or motherhood, mitochondria, pregnancy and childbirth, marriage or engagement. We are in the season of Virgo, the maiden in the heavens. Virgo, Irgo, we must venture from Leo, which was the lion, the seeding. Now we are here in the point of harvesting, alignment with the stellar, the Sabian, the constellations in the heavens, aligning now with the symbols, the seasons here on earth. Our planet is in turmoil. We can see in the background fiery energies, parched landscapes. Though the water flows through the desert to reach to the sea, we are noticing no vegetation, the lack of planting, but the over excesses of reaping. Beloved, as you sow, so must you reap. You cannot expect a harvest without learning first how to creep. We creep, we walk, we fly, we swim. Movement through water is like swimming through the air. Air is water, water is air. Flight, 
fight, fright. From fright, from fear, we must learn how to fly, to rise above, to be the creators. In our dream states, you are unbarred by the constrictions of the flesh form. In the dream state, in the dream time, you create your previews, your deja vu, and your reja vu, raising your vibration to live life here to its fullest, anchored and actualizing your sacred visions, your sacred dreams, your creations and co-creations into divine actualization, the alchemy of creation. The card in its finality is the sun. As you can see, there is a greater sun below the one that we can see, above the one that we can see. We carry that sacred sun within our bodies. It is our soul. As we are the souls, the salt of the earth, our physical representation of a cosmic sun above our head is but a reflection of one of the light sources. There are suns beyond that that we can't perceive with our naked eyes that shine with equal brilliance, luminosity. The blue sun of Sirius. The cosmic ring of suns, the Hunabku. The omnigalactic circle of suns. This card symbolizes the Orisha that we call Obatala, Oaxala, Oloron. The deity that is oversight, supervising, overseeing, Yehova, Iova. The light bringer, the day sun. The two other suns below symbolizes the alpha sun and the omega sun, the mother and the father, the hemispheres, life and rebirth, death. We have been given many stories, allegories to symbolize these truths. We have fought wars, we have captured, we have invaded using the gluttony of wanting what others have without fair trade, energy exchanging, the in-breath and the out-breath. Now in this unity, we see the meaning, success in your professional, marital or extramarital, the lovers, the love of life, or any event or situation that we have been going through. Since the sun is a creator, he affords us the creative power for art and science. Twins, duplicity and duplication of factors, double trouble, double fortune. Weeping may endure for a dark night, but joy cometh in the morning. See the element of surprise as we now ignite our holy passions within our hearts and we transmit this into the earth plane, a measure of understanding for those who have struggled through the infinite cycles of our life, death, and rebirth. For those of you who have asked for the translation of this into other languages, I urge you to translate it. You have my permission. I have given this now in this language since for the most part, Many people on this planet can understand the lingual forms of English, but the vibration, the energy, the reflection, the visualization that has been transmitted also conveys a deeper message. Inside of your own eye, your inner eye, your empathic gifts and skill, a greater truth is expanding within you. Namaste. The divine in me sees, recognizes, and honors the divine in you. We celebrate you in Lakesh. In the activation of the divine chi, I send you divine harmony. Again, to recap, the swords, wanting what others have, learning to come to that space of truth, from lack, you create desire. From desire, you can engender love. Action, emotion, action, and reaction. Triggers are being brought forth. Deep truths are being revealed. 
things that were hidden, especially under the bushes of the Amazon, the divine feminine, the lungs of Gaia, her breast, her breath, are being unveiled. Africa also burns. Africa also yearns. They have rejected the complexion of their mother in exchange for embracing truths encoded, installed in them that were falsehood from the core. Many Africans now are celebrating, even in Ethiopia, the images of the oppressors, the colonizers. You have embraced others or the truth of others to become your own and are now facing the dichotomy of why your ancestors will not gain access or give you access to sacred alchemy. Today is the day. As you have looked in your books, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, imparts a truth. Remember, Chronicles deals with time, chronological. Two sides of every coin, but yet there is the outer rim, the circumference, and there's the content from which it is made. Four, we must understand the peace, the content, the soul that lives within all items we see here and what we don't see. Everything has spirit. The spirit of a thing beams transmit vibrationally even before you can sense the substance, the matter, the hardness, the actualization of it. As it was in the heavens, as it was when it says in your Bible, there was a war in heaven and the great beast was cast down with one third of the stars of the heavens. A great deception has occurred. A galactic wrong has been inflicted here. But in that galactic wrong, we must come back to our sacred cosmic universal song. This is where heaven must be accountable. This is where earth also is the place of accountability. All that was done in secret, in the dark, are now being exposed to the light of truth for its emergence and for its correction. The sun, fire, and air, in-breath and out-breath, must operate together in order for creation, in order for light, in order for sound, in order for the music of the stairs to take hold of your life. Remember, earth, has no sorrow, sickness, that heaven, the Holy Spirit, our sacred truth cannot cure. This is the revelation. This is your revelation 21. This is the actualization of the Nicolathanus, those that have placed stumbling blocks in the word, in the language, in the language that we now speak. We must understand from this greater truth that these hurdles, that were placed in our path must be torn down bit by bit, bite by bite, precepts by precepts, from the principalities and the powers, angels in the heavens, now must be corrected here on the earth. Thrones must be dethroned. New thrones must be built. Yet the divine cannot pour forth this evidence, this teaching in a vessel that is not prepared for the alchemy of transformation. Your bodies cannot hold or absorb the divine light, the energies that are pulsing through your sun without your going through the alchemy of transformation. That is the reading. That is the energy we bring forth into this now for the course correction. Immediately after this, you will be invited to join a live reading, a broadcast for today and for your individual energetic alignment. Those of you who are felt in need of healing, in need of assistance in reminding your bodies how to heal, I invite you to comment. I invite you to gift a fair exchange offering to the pantry because we are the bread manifested. We give to the poor, we give to the needy. For 
I am love, you are love, and we are love. And so it is. We thank you. Ashe, namaste, peace and bliss to you. Amen.